Hey guys, Leah C here, and today I'm doing a type of video that I don't really do, and it's kind of personal. I know I haven't really been posting anything recently, but I'll get to that at the very end of the video. That being said, I just wanted to get right into this video because it's kind of important to me. As some of you may or may not know, today, November 4th, 2018, marks Steven Universe's fifth anniversary of being on air. On this day five years ago, Gem Glow and Laser Light Cannon aired at 8pm EST on Cartoon Network, and I'm pretty sure no one watching at the time knew how big this this series was about to explode. Incidentally, I had no idea how much this show was going to impact my life either. As most of the long-term fans of this show know and remember, Steven Universe really didn't pick up much steam until Jailbreak aired, which was the first episode that we were introduced to Ruby and Sapphire in. I had started watching the show from the first episode that had aired, but admittedly, I was really only watching it as background noise when I worked on my laptop. An interesting fact was that I was always super annoyed when the show came on because I found it annoying. I know I've mentioned this previously Previously in a live stream or two, but the reason I disliked the show when it had first started airing wasn't actually its fault. It was Cartoon Network's advertising department. But hey, I guess that stayed consistent all five years, huh? Anyways, the old commercials advertising the premiere of Steven Universe were god-awful. And when I say god-awful, it was enough to have me hating the show before it was even out. Imagine me hating Steven Universe at one point. Something about Steven saying anyone want a wet bagel and Pearl's gem looking like a Tic Tac just didn't sell the show to me. Sorry, Cartoon Network. Anyways, all jokes aside, I hated the show with a passion when it first came out. And then, Rose's scabbard happened. And when it did, it hit me hard. Admittedly, before this episode, I hadn't really paid attention while watching it. As I stated previously, it was on his background noise while working on other things. And to be honest, I'm not really sure why I decided to watch Rose's Scabbard with my undivided attention that day. But if I hadn't, I'm convinced that I would have never gotten involved with this show. Something about the ending scene of Rose's Scabbard had resonated with me, and even though I felt no previous attachment to these characters, I had ended up crying by the end. And I wasn't just crying, I was deeply touched by just one episode of this cartoon, which was something I had never felt before. At the time I had seen this episode, I was just starting out my senior year of high school. I was going through a lot of things, but the most notable thing that I was going through at the time was my mental health. I had transferred to a different school district freshman year to become part of the FFA, which my home school didn't offer. I was originally planning on being a vet tech, but later switched to and studied environmental studies for four years, which is why I know a bunch of science-related information. I also switched schools in attempts to escape my old school bullies, who relentlessly bullied me for my weight and my hairy arms. Which, you know, were both things that were out of my control because my DNA contains genes for big, hairy Italians. Literally look at anyone on my dad's side of the family and we all have the same build and hair type. But of course, people assume when you're overweight that it's because you're lazy, and of course that leads to relentless bullying from children who don't know how to throw better insults other than ones revolving around your physical appearance. Since I was a small child, I've always had major anxiety disorders and a host of other mental health issues. And this switch, it only managed to make things worse. To top it all off, my grandfather had also passed away right before my 8th grade graduation, and he was one of the people I was closest to and is the reason I got into video editing. Needless to say I had a lot bothering me, and it was too much. The end of freshman year, I was reported for attempted suicide and was put on suicide watch. Suicidal feelings weren't and aren't something new for me. I've been dealing with those intrusive thoughts my entire life. But the end of freshman year, I was at a breaking point. I just couldn't take it anymore. I didn't get a chance to try anything because I confided in a friend about my thoughts and he reported me. At the time, I was super upset about it because the school got my parents involved. And even though we stopped being friends after that incident, I know he did the right thing by reporting me. Long story short, and the reason why I'm saying all of this is because I saw myself in Pearl in that episode. While I was watching that episode, I saw myself. I saw someone who was just as broken as me, someone who had the same symptoms as me, and someone who wasn't being treated as a joke. Someone who was being treated like a human being. At this point in my life, I was so used to seeing mentally ill people with OCD being played off as gags for organizational issues, people with anxiety disorders being romanticized, autistic people being the butt of jokes or only being accepted when they were portrayed as child prodigies, or the biggest and most awful offender, the mentally ill person being the bad guy or the villain. As much as I loved the shows I grew up with, virtually none of them treated characters with mental illnesses as something normal, as something that wasn't inherently evil or funny. And when I saw Rose's scabbard, it hit me hard because it wasn't something that I knew that I needed. As much as we're told this isn't okay, that isn't normal in our day-to-day -day lives, how often are we told 
that's normal or you aren't alone. I'm willing to bet almost never. For me, to see this when I needed it the most was gratifying, because as much as my parents were there for me and as much as they tried to help and support me, they could never understand what I was going through. But someone who did understand was writing this character and they were writing her in a way that was heartfelt and serious. She wasn't just some joke character for comedic relief, she was real. She had problems and she was there. And as silly as this may sound, Pearl's mere existence to me it was validating. Validation that I wasn't crazy and that I wasn't alone. So from that point on, I went through the older episodes of the show and binged them all in one weekend. And this is when I really started getting hooked. Once I was caught up, I was watching the episodes while they aired. I also started making little funny YouTube poops here and there, which you can still find on the channel if you go back far enough in the channel's uploads. Nothing really special, but I did have fun and learn a lot making them. Pearl's continued progress in her mental health recovery was inspiring to me and made me push my myself to go to therapy so that I could begin to recover too. Watching her recover and watching myself improve was one of the most gratifying experiences I've ever had, because watching this character slowly change and become better was enough to convince me that I needed to make the push to get better too. That I wasn't irreparable, I just needed help. But I also needed to work for it and I needed to want to change. And so because of one 11 minute episode named Rose's Scabbard, I'm now an entirely different person than I was five years ago. I'm more comfortable with myself, my body, and who I am as a person. I have healthier coping mechanisms and I don't allow my mental illness to define me. But it wasn't just Pearl that was an inspiration to me. The many different body types within the show is also something that really struck a personal note with me as well, which is why I think Dove teamed up with Steven Universe specifically. For those of you who don't know, Amethyst and I are basically the same body build wise. I was never really super comfortable with my weight or body type until I saw how confident Amethyst was. I started cosplaying Amethyst back in 2015 and I still do to this day. Cosplaying her helped me build up my confidence because of how many compliments I got when I was cosplaying her. For just a day, I felt like I was on top of the world. I was comfortable in my own skin, and that was new and huge for me. Every year that I continued to cosplay her, the more and more I felt comfortable in my own body. I still say I'm only comfortable now because of the baby steps I took in self-confidence while cosplaying her. And even though I don't really talk about Garnet much on my channel, she was also a huge help for me. I grew up in a very conservative area, which is very outwardly and unapologetically homophobic. I'm lucky that I have such accepting parents, or I'd imagine it'd be worse for me. Regardless, because of the environment I was in, I was always afraid and confused about my sexuality, trying to force myself to like guys when I didn't like them at all, avoiding girls I found myself drawn to, all the classic signs of internalized homophobia. When Jailbreak first aired, I was actually in shock. I wasn't sure how to feel. The environment I was a part of at the time told me to be outraged by this, but part of me felt some sort of relief. After I saw this episode, I started to become involved with the fandom to see what other people thought. And that's when I started educating myself and started learning about who I was. And once again, learning that I was normal. Interacting with the show's LGBT plus fans is what helped me realize I wasn't straight and helped me realize my confusion was the cause of a lot of anger and resentment I was directing at myself. I was so angry that I wasn't attracted to boys and I felt like I was broken. I felt that I had let my family down and that I was going to disappoint them. But I didn't and this show and its community helped me realize that there was nothing wrong with me and that liking someone of the same gender as you is completely natural. And interestingly enough, I actually showed my parents Rosa Scabbard, Mr. Greg, and and last one out of Beach City in order to see the reactions and gauge how they'd react to me coming out to them. Well, I came out to them just fine and my parents still remain the most supportive people in my life. Thanks mom and dad, love you. But these two things aren't the only big change that has come because of this show. One of the biggest and most obvious is this channel and you guys. Because of my mental disorders, it's very difficult for me to be in places with lots of people without having sensory overload issues and heading into an anxiety attack. As you can imagine, this makes retail jobs a living nightmare for me. Because of this show, I was able to create my own community revolving around theories, reviews, and discussions. And because of you guys tuning in and joining the community, I now have a super cool job that I can do mostly from home where sensory overload isn't an issue at least most of the time, and where I can set my own hours so that I can 
comfortably go to school without worry. I have a job that I love and I love overanalyzing cartoons with you all even if the constant demand of content on long Steven Universe hiatuses can get a bit overwhelming for me at times. I also met Laura through the Steven Universe fandom who is my best friend. We jokingly call each other the alternate universe versions of ourselves because of how alike we are. Additionally, I met most of my close friends through the Steven Universe fandom as well. I also got the chance to know and talk to a bunch of amazing people in the cartoon YouTube community like the people at the round table and Pie Guy Rules. And none of this would be possible without Steven Universe. I recognize that I would not be here if it wasn't for this show, in both a career sense as well as literal. It helped me out of a bunch of dark times in my life and without it I genuinely don't think I'd still be here. This is why I praise this show so much because of what it means to me and the many others who have similar experiences that I do. Despite all the flaws and glaring issues that this show has, Steven Universe has and still is changing my life and others' lives for the better, and I honestly truly cannot thank the Crooniverse enough for this show. I could go on more and more, but honestly I wasn't even planning on writing this video. I'm just kind of sitting here typing this script up at 6 in the morning because I realized what day it was and I got emotional. Happy 5th birthday, Steven Universe, and here's to hoping that there's many more to come. Before we end today, I also wanted to quickly apologize for my infrequent uploading schedule. I'm in college right now full time, so it's hard for me to focus on YouTube stuff as well as school stuff. The semester ends for me mid-December, so you can expect uploads to somewhat regain a normal schedule around that time. Cartoon Network Hyatt is permitting, that is. And if you liked this video and would like to see those new uploads when they come out, be sure to hit that subscribe button and click the notification bell to receive notifications of when I upload. All that being said, I hope to see you guys in the next video. Have an amazing day, guys.